Hello, everyone. If you're just joining us, thank you so much for being here. I'll let everyone connect to the webinar and then we'll get started. Okay, let's get started. So hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, the teacher education presentation. I'm Amanda Mills, one of the assistant directors of undergraduate admissions, um, also joined from undergraduate admissions by Alyssa Noel and Cameron, who will be behind the scenes uh, monitoring the Q&A for us if you have admissions related inquiries. Um, we really thank you for joining us for this exciting opportunity to hear all about opportunities available to you to pursue teacher education at Stony Brook. And we'll talk definitely about how that happens and answer your questions. Um, and since we won't be discussing general admission requirements, if you've not already had an opportunity to do so, or if you'd like clarification or an, on our admission process, please attend one of our upcoming live presentations where we review the application process, deadlines and policies, and provide details about student life, living on campus, and student support services. Stony Brook information sessions are offered a few times every month throughout the year. This session is also being recorded and will be available for you to watch later this week on the Undergraduate Admissions YouTube page and I will post some links in the chat for you to bookmark for later. Uh, now, please join me in welcoming our first guest, Susan Ross. Thank you, Susan. You're welcome, Amanda. Hi, everyone. I'm Susan Ross. I'm the Interim Director of Detail, and that is our teacher education program. I'm gonna give you a brief overview, and then I'm going to let two of my colleagues who are program directors give you a little bit more specifics as to their programs. And we've also invited some of our current and past students to join us to give you the student perspective about teacher education at Stony Brook University. Our teacher education program um, has basically seven components. We offer uh, education programs in English, social studies, mathematics, world languages, sciences, TESOL, and we also have a teacher education program in speech and language pathology. Um, these are programs that are all content-based, which makes our programs a little bit different from programs in other universities that have schools of education. All of our students have a major in the content area. So if you are an undergrad student coming to Stony Brook, you are going to major in, for example, political science or Spanish or English in a content area. And then about halfway through your studies, you would decide to join our teacher preparation or teacher education program and add those courses to your program. However, when you graduate, you graduate with a bachelor's degree, whether it's a BA or a BS in the content area, and then teacher preparation is added on to that, which really makes you a very marketable candidate when you apply for teaching positions at our local school districts because of the strong content background that you will acquire throughout your studies at Stony Brook University. We do have basically three avenues or tracks that you can take to become a teacher in New York State. And as you may have heard, there are there is a large shortage of teachers, um, primarily because of COVID and teachers kind of retiring and aging out of the profession. So anybody who's considering becoming a teacher at this point in time is really entering a program at a really, really good point in history. Our three programs, the first one, you can get an undergraduate degree, as I said, in your content area with teacher preparation added, and you would be certifiable upon graduation to become a teacher in whatever content area you pursued. We also have a combined degree program, which is a, usually a five degree program, where at the end of your studies, you graduate with both a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in your content area. You would have a bachelor's degree, for example, in English, 
And then you'd have a master of arts in teaching in English as well. So when you graduate, you also would be um, eligible to become a teacher. But the beauty of that is that everyone who's a teacher for New York State must pursue a master's degree. So if you complete the combined degree program, when you graduate, you will already have been able to check that box because you're graduating with both degrees. And then thirdly, we have a Master of Arts in Teaching program, which is for somebody who has a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science in the content area, and then has decided to pursue a Master of Arts in Teaching in that same content area. And then lastly, we do have a combined degree program in um, a few of our foreign languages along with TESOL. So some students do decide to pursue that program, again, a five-year program, but then you're graduating with two areas of certification. You'd be certified to teach the foreign language as well as TESOL, which is English as a second language. So that's a brief overview of what we have to offer. As we go through the webinar, if you have any questions, we encourage you to please um, post them in the chat and ask, and we will try to get to as many questions as we possibly can during the time that's allotted to us. I'd like to now introduce to you Sarah Jourdain, who is the Graduate Program Director for our World Languages Program. Thank you, Susan, and good evening, everyone. Um, as Susan said, I direct the World Language Teacher Education Program. Uh, it is possible at Stony Brook to um, pursue teacher certification in French, Italian, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, uh, and Korean. Those are the six languages that we provide teacher education for. Um, and as Susan mentioned, we have the three pathways. You can pursue teacher education as part of your bachelor's degree, as part of a combined BA MAT, Master of Arts in Teaching, or as a standalone MAT program. We also have for French, Italian, and Spanish, um, a dual degree combined BA MAT, as Susan mentioned, which is combined with the linguistics department you in fact get a double BA, a bachelor's in linguistics and a bachelor's in your chosen language, French, Italian, or Spanish. And then a master of arts in teaching of that language. And at the end of that program, you come out with two certifications, the certification in TESOL or ENL, English as a new language or teaching of English as a second language and the certification in your language content area. So that's quite a unique program. I think we're the only um, uh, university in the SUNY system that offers that particular program. And in a few minutes, uh, Sophia Mastrangelo, who's on here, will be able to tell you a little bit about her experiences because she is in that particular program. Um, but we, we do offer all of these various pathways to become certified in these different languages. And I just want to say, I'm going to pass it to my colleague, Josh, um, but I did see in the question and answer um, button, somebody asked whether this is a pathway to become certified to teach at the college level. So interestingly, all of these pathways are to be certified to teach in the K through 12 school system in New York State. We have reciprocity agreements with many other states. So you could take this certification and then go teach in the K through 12 system in other states. For many of our certifications, the certification level is actually um, for the secondary level. So grades seven through 12. And then it's possible to get an extension to teach at the lower grade levels, grades five and six, or in the case of world languages, you can get a K through six extension. Um, TESOL is our only certification, English as a new language is our only certification area where the certification is for grades K through 12, because that's how it's defined by New York State. The other certification areas that we provide at Stony Brook are for the secondary school level. And all of this is for, um, the K through 12 or the secondary level. This is not necessarily the pathway that you would be on if you wanted to teach at the college level. To become a university instructor, a college professor, you need to pursue a PhD, a doctoral degree, and that's a somewhat different pathway. And um, your advisors in your content departments can talk to you about that pathway if you would like to go onto that pathway. So what we're talking about this evening are the pathways to become middle school and high school teachers by and large. Uh, so now I'd like to pass it over to my colleague, Josh, uh, who directs our English teacher education program. Josh? 
Sarah, thank you so much. And uh, I am Josh Cabot, fairly newly minted director of English education. And uh, I come at this job from an interesting perspective. I am not an academic. I um, spent 34 years in the classroom as a teacher in the first in New York City's public schools and then in Roslyn. Those of you who know Northern Nassau County will know Roslyn and uh, eventually becoming department chair. And it's in that ladder that my experience um, sort of prepared me for this job because I had to hire a lot of people, occasionally for a tenure track position, but most often for leave replacements or other things like that. And it is remarkable how many of the successful candidates I hired for both permanent and temporary positions across the years were products of the Stony Brook program. And I think that has a lot to do with the people doing the preparation. And I think it has a lot to do, as Susan was saying, with the structure in that in emphasizing both content area and pedagogical studies, you emerge with a, 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 a breadth of experience and knowledge that people, again, as Susan was saying, who are have their masters in education just don't have. It was it, it was a very attractive combination for me hiring teachers. And for you in your position, that's what you need to be thinking about. Susan is right in that there's going to be a teacher shortage, but you need to be asking yourselves, well, okay, what chance am I going to have of getting a, you know, a tenure track job if I do this and I graduate from Stony Brook? And I'm telling you from the perspective of my new position and from the perspective of being department chair in a great school district out on the island for, uh, for uh, 15 years, that the, the preparation that happens here at Stony Brook is just absolutely matchless. That, as I said, that unmatched balance of knowing the content area and knowing how to teach it as well, which are two very different things. And uh, just a last comment is that I know you're thinking, you're thinking, well, let's see. All I'm reading about are fights at, um, at uh, school board meetings and books being banned uh, all over the place and English teachers getting in the middle of all of it. Let me tell you something. It is, I, I did this for 34 years, as I said, and there was some politics and it sometimes got ugly, but the teaching part of my job, there was not one day in all that time where I didn't love it. There were days when I woke up and I said, wow, they're paying me for doing this. I can't believe it. So. As Susan points out, it's a great future. It is in spite of what you hear. I mean, our numbers in the English program as in world languages and the other programs have been going up. It's a really good time to become a teacher. And if, you know, I quote my grandmother, I can quote no greater philosopher who always recited that poem about leaving footprints on the sands of time. And if you wanna live, if that to you is a meaningful life, then becoming a secondary teacher a lot of footprints and a lot of you. If I ask, I can't see you guys now, but if I asked you, okay, I'm oh, sorry, one last thing. I was at a graduation and my principal said, name the last five people who won the uh, MVP award in the NBA finals. Nobody could. Name the last five people who won best actor at the Oscars. Nobody could. Name one teacher who made a difference in your life. Everybody could. And I'm sure you kid too. And that's a reminder of what's important and why. So if you want that as a part of your life, I'm telling you, man, Stony Brook is the place to do it. And uh, I hope to see you guys on campus. Maybe we could invite um, Sophia. Sophia, are you with us this evening? Yes, hi. Hi. Uh, if you'd like to introduce yourself and, and explain what program you're in and then maybe give just a little bit of information about, um, you know, uh, how you how you made it through this program. You're almost through, right? <laughs> yes. So I'm in my last semester. I'm enrolled in the TESOL program, which stands for Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages. Um, and I'm in my fifth year and my last semester. I'm doing my student teaching currently. I also did the program where I am also doing a language. So I'm doing the program where I'm doing ENL and I'm doing a language. And it was a lot of work to get here, but it was so worth it because even going into my graduate year, my master's, all of my other friends when they graduated had to worry about taking the GRE 
all of these different tests and applying to grad school and just knowing that I was just going right back to Stony Brook for another semester was definitely a weight off of my chest. And I was really glad that I made that decision my sophomore year. So I was already into the program from early on. Um, you get to take a lot of linguistics courses, which personally I think are really interesting. And if you like language and you're interested in teaching, this is a great path for you. Um, sorry, I have notes written down. It's also awesome. I saw someone say that they were wondering about getting elementary certified. The TESOL program is great because you're certified K to 12, so you can teach anyone. And if you're doing also a language with it, then you will be certified seven to 12, but I like that I have options and going into looking for jobs because in a couple months I'm gonna be applying for jobs. I definitely feel very comfortable with the fact that I can be a Spanish teacher, I can be an ENL teacher, and I can work K to 12. It's very, it's awesome. And um, it's a very rewarding career, especially after working with kids um, for the past two years. You see how you can really connect with them and change their lives. And it's a very rewarding job. If you're a people person and you like to talk, you're going to be talking all day, connecting with people all day. I'm a people person. I like talking. So it's the best. That's why I like language. And um, let's see. Yeah, and there's a lot of jobs, especially if you do this program. Everyone keeps telling me, don't worry about next year. You're going to get a job. And I'm still a little worried because I have to obviously get the job first. But there are a lot of openings right now. And it's a really good time to go into teaching. And yeah. Sophia, how did you decide to become a teacher? And at what point in your studies or your life did you make that decision? Um, Not until I actually got to college did I decide. I thought I didn't want to be a teacher. Because my mom, my parents work in schools, so I was kind of like, I don't want to do this, no. But I came to Stony Brook undecided, and I thought about other career paths. And it was really until I found the TESOL program, and I was like, oh, this is cool. This is different. Because I didn't want to just go into general education teaching. And when I saw that there was something with language, and I always liked Spanish, I spoke Spanish, and I was like, this is great. This is kind of what I was looking for. But it did take me a little bit to realize that that was what I wanted to do. And that's okay. I didn't actually apply to the program until my sophomore year. So my freshman year, I think I only took one linguistics course and maybe a Spanish course. So there's really no rush if you're just entering into the school too. We had a question that was submitted um, from when people registered for the event. And they wanted to know if the, if the, I guess really any of the education programs would be challenging to do if you were a student athlete. Are there any student athletes that have come through the program at Stony Brook? Absolutely. We've had them in the, in the world language program. I see Josh nodding. He's had them in the English teacher ed program. Uh, it is absolutely feasible to do that if you're a student athlete. And it can be a wonderful path to be on because you might be considering being both a teacher and a coach at um, at the high school level or middle school or high school level. And so your athletic background could be put to use in that way once you get into the, into the K-12 school system. Um, but we've worked around uh, student athlete schedules to make sure that they can take their classes and make sure that they can do what's called field work, um, their field experience, which is observations in the schools that, that need to be done before they do, before candidates do their student teaching, and then um, working with the athletes for their placements for the student teaching semester also. And I know that it's not kind of our thing <laughs> at Stony Brook, but we do have a question about um, elementary level teaching. So, you know, I know we have obviously the TESOL K through 12. Um, is, is there any pathway, like if a student, you know, comes to Stony Brook, chooses another major and then goes on and get their master's. Is there any pathway for elementary ed through Stony Brook or is it really just better to find a program where you, if you already know in high school that you want elementary 
or early childhood that you just start somewhere else? I would recommend starting somewhere else because I think that, you know, I wouldn't want to mislead someone. Um, however, if they wanted to get an undergraduate degree in, you know, another area and then pursued a master of arts in teaching, it would have to be at another institution, but at least they'd have the academic undergrad background to do that. Right. And that would just mean also it, delaying what you want to do. So we're really not necessarily the right fit. If you're a hundred percent sure that's what you want from day one. Um, and so uh, someone asked about um, the requirements to join, but I wasn't sure if they meant admission requirements or after you're at Stony Brook to actually be in the foreign language secondary teacher program. Is there a two-step admission? Uh, there is. There is. I mean, you're admitted to Stony Brook. Um, and then typically students, as um, Sophia said, when they're sophomores apply to join the teacher education part of the program. So you're not admitted directly into teacher education if you come in as a freshman. Um, although you can meet with, with those of us who coordinate the different programs and get advice about what courses to take your first year, we're happy to give you some advising, but you wouldn't officially be admitted to the program um, typically until the second semester of your sophomore year because the teacher education courses um, the pedagogy courses are all at the 300 and 400 levels. So you don't take those courses until you're a junior or a senior. You do take your content courses, of course, starting when you're a freshman. And so there's where we can give you a little bit advi of advising um, as far as what path to pursue and which courses to take for the different content areas. And when you get towards the end of the program and you're taking classes like Methods 1 and Methods 2, which is the last, last two in the series, before you actually student teach, um, you'll be doing state mandated observations. And each department has its own series of connections at districts all across Suffolk or really all across the island. And you'll get some, uh, some experience watching master teachers teach. And then for your last, your, your grand finale, you student teach. And Sarah, I believe the rules the same in world I think the same as everywhere. The, the only hard and fast rule is that you can't do any classwork while you're student teaching, right? That, that so you have to clear all the decks, but uh, we also start around the sophomore year and everyone gets through uh, in more than, better than in one piece. So yeah, it's, um, it's uh, you're well prepared when you, when you walk out the door. And I say that not just as now the preparer, but as I said before, as someone who interviewed a lot of people who came through the program. So I can tell you from both sides. Um, we have a question in the Q&A um, uh, from a student who, or if, if, they're, if it's difficult to work as a teacher in New York State or in the United States if you're not a citizen and how common are either international students or students who are here and not documented, for example, to become are there pathways to teacher education programs? The New York State Education Department is the body that makes those rules. Um, in order to set foot in a classroom in a New York State school district, all of our students, even if they're not in student teaching yet, but in methods classes doing observations have to be fingerprinted. And in order to be fingerprinted, you have to have a social security number. So that is really the kind of the gatekeeper of how far a student can go. We have had situations where students have started the program, but through visa limitations, um, et cetera, um, have had challenges because they were not able to get fingerprinted and therefore were not able to do the, the in-person coursework that they needed to do. And we had a, a student who pre-submitted a question, and I thought this was interesting because we have a lot of our high school students are very high achieving, and they want to know if they can double major and then get two different 
like certifications like in a math and English or, you know, science and language. Is that, do we have a lot of students who do that or is that, you do really kind of have to start with one? You basically start with a one, although God bless anybody who wants to do that. It's certainly the more certificates you have, the more marketable you are. Um, but basically, like, for example, we have students in the sciences or in the world languages who major in one language, get their degree in that language or that science, but have taken enough credits in the second language or the second science to get a second teaching certificate. So you graduate with the one degree, let's say in earth science, but you have enough coursework in chemistry. So you apply for your earth science teaching certificate and get it. And then you take a different pathway, but you are able to get a, an additional teaching certificate in the second science or in the second world language. So you're not majoring in both, but you are able to get more than one teaching certificate. And, and we've actually had that for for other interesting combinations. I've had students who've done a, in certifications in a combination of um, Spanish and math, for example, um, or uh, Italian and English. So they've picked one to be their the, the path that they want to take, which is their certification pathway, but they essentially double major in the other subject without the certification pathway added onto that second major. But when they're finished, they can apply for both certifications. So it is absolutely po uh, possible. The only program where we have it registered as an official dual certification program is that combination BAMAT that combines linguistics plus a language and the students come out with two degrees and two certifications. That one is officially registered. Yeah, I know. And it's funny because we get a lot of very eager, like, I want a triple major. I want to, you know, and because they haven't had the context of like a freshman year yet or <laughs> how, you know, you have electives and you have major requirements and core requirements. And so it it's all kind of fuzzy and out of focus until you really get started and then can kind of put all those pieces together. So I think this is great because it gives kind of plants the seeds to start thinking about <laughs> the options. Um, well, maybe <laughs> Sophia can tell us since she's she's doing that combo. So how many linguistics and how many um, language courses approximately did you take each semester for, for doing this combined program? I would say, I mean, it did depend semester to semester, but I probably did, at the beginning, I took more of my linguistics courses and then I took more of my Spanish courses, but I probably took five courses a semester. Probably, I don't think I took less than that, but I don't think I took six, probably five. And it was either three linguistics courses, two Spanish courses, or I had teaching courses that I needed to take. There was a point where I was taking three Spanish courses, which was kind of a lot, but you get through it. Um, it is a lot of work doing the dual program, but again, it is definitely worth it in the long run. I'm very thankful that I made the decision to do this program, but it is a lot of work, so be prepared for that. And um, we do get this question a lot in the admissions office, um, about how to become an art teacher because Stony Brook doesn't have kind of a designated program. Is that another one where you would recommend find a school to, and start, you know, if you're in high school now and you're looking at colleges, do you recommend finding a school that already has an established program or do you recommend some other thing we don't know about? <laughs> I actually had that conversation with a dad um, not that long ago. I mean, I think Stony Brook's programs are so rich to get an undergraduate degree in any area at Stony Brook is certainly well worth the investment in time. However, for in art as an example or music, when you graduate from Stony Brook, you're not going to be able to teach. So you're still going to need a master's degree in order to be able to teach because you've got to do your pedagogy classes and your student teaching. So it really depends upon what your ultimate goal is. If you want the quickest path um, to get an undergraduate degree and be able to work when you graduate, then Stony Brook doesn't have an art program that would prepare you for that or a music program that does. But I feel that if you want a, a robust program in art or in music, 
then majoring in that as an undergrad at Stony Brook and then pursuing a master's in education in art elsewhere. I think that's really the best of both worlds. But again, it depends upon the personal circumstances. And um, so the um, next question is, what is required? <laughs> I don't think they want every specific course outlined, but I guess kind of generally to be able to teach math and and or science in high school. Well, none of us are from the math or the sciences. <laughs> so you need, usually it's 30 credits, sometimes 33, sometimes 36, depending upon the program in your core classes. And then you've got your pedagogy classes, your methods, your two methods classes. You've got foundations, special education, literacy, human development, and then you have your student teaching. And then you have all the other requirements that you need 100, was it 120 or what something in that neighborhood to get your undergraduate degree? Um, and I don't know if this is common, but we have um, a future computer science student at Stony Brook. Congratulations on an early acceptance. That's great. Um, and they're wondering if there are any subjects they can teach. Um, in, is that is there a pathway for maybe math that they could do with a computer science degree? And then they're asking, will their classes or exams be missed if they're doing, you know, I guess student teaching as a sophomore or junior? Have we had any co College of Engineering and Applied Sciences students go through? Do we know? Um, as far as I've seen, I've only been in my position for three years, but in the math department, I've seen students with an undergraduate, pursuing an undergraduate degree in math or applied math, right. but not computers. So you would need to meet with an advisor and make sure that, I mean, I'm not gonna say computer science is not doable to become a math teacher. I'm not, I don't have that knowledge base to, weigh in on that. Um, but you don't do your student teaching until the last semester anyway. So all of your coursework would have to be completed prior to that. So there would be no conflicts because you would have to have everything else done. But I don't know if it's doable with a computer science degree. Yeah, the computer science degree is actually more than the 120 credits. So probably would be difficult. Um, but again, it, there's so many variables. A lot of our students do come into Stony Brook with credit they've earned in high school through college or advanced placement credits, or even um, some in IB credits. So anything's possible, you know, maybe a double major or adding a minor with a content area. There's a lot of math and computer science uh, major. So it might be possible, but it, it would probably be something you'd want to meet um, with the computer science department about to see if they have any experience with students that have gone through um, through them. But that advising usually happens a bit later. So you could always reach out to admissions at enroll at stonybrook.edu and see if they can provide any insight. Um, all right, looks like I think we answered all the questions that were in the Q&A. Um, any, any additional questions from our audience or any, while we wait, are there any kind of final words of wisdom and advice <laughs> uh, from Sophia or from anyone on our panel about their experience and opportunities at Stony Brook? In the three years that I've been at Stony Brook, I have found both the faculty and the student body who are in the teacher education programs to be very passionate and extremely invested in their role. Um, my background is I was a business education teacher and a TESOL teacher, duly certified. And then I went into school administration, which we also have an educational leadership program. So. Uh, Many of our 
future principals and assistant principals and school district administrators start out at Stony Brook in the teacher education program um, or in an undergraduate degree and then take a master's in teacher education and then progress on to educational leadership because of the quality of the programs that we offer. Um, and when you go to interview for a teaching position, so many times the person interviewing you is a Stony Brook graduate. So um, it certainly speaks very highly of the programs that we offer and the um, that people stay with it. You know, they do their entire educational career at Stony Brook. That, that's been my experience. And I'm an Albany grad, so <laughs> not Stony Brook. Okay, I don't see any other questions in the Q&A. Um, Sarah, Josh, any final words or words of encouragement <laughs> for our future sea wolves? <laughs> for, our, um, for our world language programs, um, I just also want to mention that we have some wonderful study abroad opportunities through Stony Brook. So if you're majoring in a language and going into world language education, you have the opportunity to study in the country, in one of the countries where the language you're learning is spoken. And that brings a richness back to your, um, to your students and classes. When you become a teacher, you can talk about the culture that you've experienced, that you've lived when you've studied abroad. So, um, so for anyone interested in that path, I encourage you to, to think about the study abroad opportunities available through Stony Brook also. Um, what I've noticed in my year and a half in this position is that I am constantly amazed at how the students, both undergraduate and graduate and together, strive to take care of each other, to look after each other. There is a sense of camaraderie. There is a sense, it's not, like, oh, I'm competing against this person for a job somewhere down the line, so I'm not gonna help them so I can say, it's always, what can I do? How can I help? Here are my notes. Oh, I, I did this last year. You know, here's how I got through it. At the end of the semester, I started doing a gathering of all the graduate students, the student teachers, the uh, undergraduates, and you know anyone else who might even be interested in the program. And so I've done three semesters, three, three times so far, Every time I walk out of there, even in a time where it seems like nobody's reading anymore, you know, adults, let alone students, I always walk out of there feeling like, yeah, we're going to be just fine. Because I have never seen a group of, more, of brighter, more passionate, more dedicated people. And again, I think what you're going to find is, you know, to build on what Susan and Sarah were saying and the students as well, that... The faculty is very devoted to it, but I think you're gonna get so much out of your fellow students. I am just constantly amazed by how everyone in the program, and I would bet it's true of the other departments as well, looks after each other. And that's something to look forward to and another plus for the program. We had a question come in. Where is the teacher program office? Can I go and ask questions when the spring semester begins? which is next Monday. <laughs> well, right now we're in transition. Um, I will say my office will be called the office for now. And I'm in the SBS S651 is my room. But we are hopefully by the end of the semester moving into an official space that will be called the Teacher Education Program Center or whatever title they decide to give us. So for now, it would be my office. And please feel free to email me, call me. Um, and if you want to do an in-person, if you want to Zoom, if you want to talk on the phone, whatever works best for you, I'm always available for that. And one thing I did want to mention in our Methods 2 class, students have an opportunity to do substitute teaching. We have a substitute teaching program so what, since it's not your student teaching semester, you do have a little bit more flexibility with your time and you are able to secure substitute teaching positions while you're completing your coursework um, before you student teach. So that gives you an opportunity to kind of get your feet wet, see what it's like to run a class on your own and also earn some money at the same time. 
And Sophia, um, if you think back to when you were a senior in high school, thinking about going to college and you were undecided, undeclared general um, studies major starting out, um, is there like a piece of advice if you think about that kind of application to college and decision-making process um, that you can think of that kind of stands out as like either something you wish you had known about college now that you have some some perspective or some advice to kind of ease the apprehension of our future sea wolves? Yeah, um, I definitely wish that I had a little bit more guidance with it because I personally felt like I, as a senior, wanted to go to college, but I didn't have a lot of guidance with it and I was like whatever I'm gonna apply to a couple schools and do whatever and I'll just see how it goes so if you are really really stressing don't stress a lot of the time people change their minds in their first year um just go to a school where you think you'll fit in look at the pages there's so much information online I should have researched more as well I love Stony Brook and I'm glad that I did my program and everything worked out for me but as a senior, I didn't put too much thought into my decisions. And I wish that someone just would have told me, go on the websites, look at the programs, look at schools where they have programs that you like, and it'll all work out. You'll make friends and it'll be the best. So you're going to have a great time regardless. So don't worry too much. And yeah. And I also, to touch on what um Susan Ross said about the subbing, I was a substitute teacher the past two years and I 1 billion million percent recommend it because I was able to actually work in a school in one building and I got a position for two years and I met everyone and that is the ultimate test to see if you want to be a teacher because if you are on the fence go sub they'll hire you and yeah it's definitely just the best way to see if you want to become a teacher. And it's probably not like what you see in the movies that substitute no, teachers go through. <laughs> it's so you different. You can't base it on that. Is different it different than the movies. Teaching <laughs> is different from the movies. Yeah. That's excellent advice. Thank you so much, everyone. I really think this was um, a much needed presentation to really get a lot of the, um, you know, kind of confusion out about how education programs work at Stony Brook. Um, there are a lot of opportunities here. So we hope that our future sea wolves will, um, you know, soon be on the path to um, teaching future America. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Susan, Sarah, Josh, and especially Sophia for your time. Uh, thank you to our guests for joining us. And we wish everyone the best of luck with your applications to Stony Brook and your decisions over the next few months. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your evening. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.